Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 11 o'clock traditional gospel service. I ask that you please stand and join us in our first praise and worship song, Happy. God in prayer. Lord, your life covered our life, and we praise and exalt your name today in this place, Lord, in this sanctuary. Lord, we know you're present here with us. We ask that you would clean us from the inside out, make your work manifest in us, Lord. Lord, you are an unstoppable God. You have no restrictions, no limitations. And Lord, let us not be the ones to be the barrier to what you can do in our lives, Lord. Let us start with today. As you make your home in us, as you begin to settle in inside of us, we pray that whatever we bring into this place, whatever burden we share, Lord, whatever sin in our life, whatever shame in our life, Lord, Lord, we acknowledge before you that we cannot stop you. So, Lord, we ask for you to do a tremendous work inside of us. And, Lord, in this space of today, 
in this worship time. Lord, we ask that you would bless us, encourage us, pray that through the reading of your word, through the call to worship, through our offering, the offering of our hearts before you, through our songs, through my message, Lord, I pray that you would take that and permeate the soil of each and every one of our hearts as you plant the seeds of your gospel truth inside of us. You are the only one. You are all sufficient. There's nothing else that we need except you, Lord. And we thank you for making it just that simple. That again, your life and death makes us holy in front of you, makes us worthy. For those who come in here with with burdens, Lord, may we lift that person up. There's no reason to hide what is going on inside of us when it comes to the people of God, Lord. We present these before each other and we pray for one another. And Lord, if there are celebrations that we bring to this place, we celebrate and encourage one another together. As we continue to look across the world, Lord, no expanse is too great for you. We lift up our nation to you in the civil unrest. Not only are there hot spots of COVID-19 cases, but there are hot spots of civil unrest. We pray for unity in our nation, pray for dialogue. We pray for love and compassion. We pray for open communication. We pray for our president, pray for our senators and representatives, all the way on down to our governors and mayors. Pray for wisdom to be upon them. And Lord, we pray for our wing, our base. Pray that we would continue to lead the fight, help us to be strong. Pray for our leaders at all levels. Pray that you would give them wisdom to guide their people, encourage their people, discipline well, that we may continue to remain strong and faithful. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Please, uh, please stand and join us in our call to worship. O oh Lord, our God, you have set this day apart for us. A day, a day set, apart, set apart, a day, a day of, of rest, and a day of praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord, our God, is in our midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. And he, will, he will exult over you with loud singing. Please remain standing for a second song, Lord, I lift your name on high.
seated. In your bulletins, you'll find our prayer of confession. Let us pray together as we prepare our hearts for worship. Give our hearts peace and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Let's stand together once more as we sing together hymn number 415 found in your celebrational hymnal. We are called to be God's people. As our ushers prepare to come forward to help us take up the offering, I just want to tell you about some awesome things we're doing around here. I had a couple of people who have uh, found some curriculum that we're going to be presenting for the women's Bible study and the young adult Bible study. And so we're going to be getting that ordered very, very soon. And uh, as well as we're going to be having Bible trivia tonight. Why do I tell you all this? Because uh, in a chapel, you know, when I was an airman sitting in a chapel, I was like, why in the world do we give? You know, the lights are on, the, the chaplain's getting paid. Why do we do all this? Well, there are certain aspects of the ministry, like paying for curriculum, uh, paying for food for our fellowships or, or events that are at the Titans Refuge Ministry Center. Some of those things um, need to be paid for by what we call a chapel tithes and offerings. And so I want to thank you for your support of this ministry and the resources that you share for your offering. Um, but I want you to, to be aware of that. Those things come from your faithful giving. So, so it's my way of saying thank you for your support, and we're glad that we can continue the ministry both here in the chapel and in, in our outreach to our airmen out here on the base. Thank you.
Let us stand together once more and sing our doxology found inside of our bulletins. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, just like with any sort of sea burning training, you know, when it's time to mask up, it, it's, you know, could be COVID. So we're going to, I got this really awesome mask. I got this this week. So excited. Go Texas Rangers. All right. Awesome. Yeah. So we're going to mask up and then we're going to exchange peace and fellowship with one another. And again, learn each other's names. Even if you've met them before, it's okay to go up and say, what was your name again? I do it all the time. So, so please don't feel embarrassed for doing so.
Y'all may be seated. Thank you once again, praise team. Phenomenal job. All right, who's going, who's going to Japan for your next assignment? Della? I know Kat, right? Are you going to the mainland, Honshu, or Kadena? Both going to Kadena. Cool. Anybody else? Bernice? You're not going, you're not going to go back to Yokota, are you? <laughs> well, hey, if, you're, if you are going to be in Japan next year, there's, there's going to be a big event there. It's going to be the Olympics. That's pretty cool. But if you're looking for something to do next summer, you could fly to Tokyo for what was supposed to take place this summer, and that was the Olympics. It's going to be postponed due to COVID. But I don't know if you know this, but the whole ceremony, the, the torch ceremony, starts in a place called Olympia. And the torch is lit by, in a ceremony where there are 11, at least there's more women than this, but they represent the original 11 Vestal Virgins who lit the original torch. And they light the torch, and there's a big ceremony, probably takes an hour and a half, I've watched it on YouTube, it's pretty cool. So they light this, this torch, and then after that it goes on to the next country. And, and so, of course, I don't know what they do. If any of you know, that'd be cool. But I don't know if they get on like a, a tanker ship or if they get on, they probably don't get on a flight with the torch. But somehow they get it over to Japan. And the whole torch lighting ceremony from Olympia to Tokyo, uh, what they've calculated it out, I don't know how, but somehow they've calculated it to take 121 days. And so when they finally do that, then of course the torch is lit in the stadium in Tokyo. And the theme of the torch lighting ceremony is entitled, Hope Lights Our Way. Now in 2016, this is kind of cool. So in 2016, in Rio, Rio de Janeiro, Christ the Redeemer is over the whole thing. Think about it, hope lights. It's, it's, it's really hard to ignore this fact, but, but it says, Hope Lights Our Way. Christ the Redeemer is over the city. The torch is lit there. Now it goes to a country where 2.3% of the people are Christ followers. So, so a country that at least is predominantly probably Roman Catholic to a country where 2.3% are Christian. Hope lights our way. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about how we are involved with the relay of this torch. Now if you go to the next slide, we're going to be in... Matthew chapter 5 today, I'll be reading out of the ESV, my favorite translation. We have Bibles here in the pew for you. We're just going to be reading three verses, but we have it up here on the screen here for you. Matthew chapter 5, here's what Jesus imperatively tells us. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp, put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Now, Jesus calls us to be salt and light. And why does he use these two objects? One is solid, the other is of an essence, salt and light. It is because both are used some way, shape, or form to permeate our communities as agents of redemption. Now, salt was a preservative for meat in his time, and meat, if not preserved, rots and decays. So many of you work around people who are miserable. They're rotting inside. And behavior is always a reflection. Re behavior is always a manifestation of what's going on inside. It's an outward expression of what's going on inwardly. And so we as Christ followers do all we can to prevent moral corruption and decay. Now, in order to properly interpret what Christ was telling us, we have to understand first century culture. What do we, we use salt for? We use it to season our food. We use it in combination with salt and pepper. And most of us, probably all of us, have 
more sodium in our bodies than we we're supposed to. It's like 1,500 milligrams. I think each day I probably consume about five to 7,000 milligrams a day. I'm sorry, Jen. That's just, you know, that's American life, right? But that's what we do. So salt in this day and age was used a little bit differently. They didn't use it as, a, as an accompaniment to pepper. But they would use it to prevent their meats from being thrown to the dogs because in that society, meat was very expensive, very costly. To lose saltiness would be more or less, be, it would talk about becoming defiled, mingling with other impure substances to negate evangelism. What does that mean for us in practice? Well, we have no power to change anybody. The first time you try to change a person within your own power, you're going to be met with resistance. It just doesn't work. But there's a Messiah. There's a God. There's a Holy Spirit living inside of us who can change lives. And he uses us. I don't know why he uses a man like me. I don't know why he uses people to do his mission. But the mission is to carry this salt and light into the areas and the workplaces and the, to the people around us. All we can do is remain pure, holy, set apart. And when we come into contact with people, there's a little rubbing off. There's a little bumping into people. There's a little splashing over of that essence. Whether it's, you know, Monday and the pressure's on and you've got a project you're working on, people are watching. Whether it's Friday night at a social setting, people are watching. Let our behavior be congruent with the gospel and who God has taught us to be. We spoke a lot about that, about the practical things we can do as the people of God from Philippians 2. And the whole, the whole uh, chapter of Philippians 2 talks about the practice of being a Christian. We are the ones to be called to preserve society. I tell you, some of the best, you know, and you may say, well, I, I, I may not be able to do that, you know, because chaplain, that's your job. I want to tell you that when I was a crew chief in the rough and tumble world of, of the flight line, some of my best evangelism was out on the flight line. Now, having to get conversations steered from some of the stuff that people talk about on the flight line and steered into maybe deeper theological and philosophical conversations, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a trick to that, all right? You've got to be very, very creative. But some of your best evangelism can take place right in your work centers. So this ties right into what we do here at this base, whether you're active duty or civilian. Jesus needs you to be the light. So God has strategically placed this chapel as a beacon of hope right here, right where we're sitting, as a place to point people to God. And it starts with you and I. That's salt, person to person. And through each person, it's going to reach into our workplaces, into our units, to our branches of service, and all the way throughout our whole military. And that's a responsibility you and I have as just one person, to be in connection with God's holiness. Asking God, hey God, is there an opportunity that I can share the good news with somebody? And you'd be amazed. I've asked God for opportunities. God, present an opportunity to itself. And, and somehow somebody will ask me, hey, you know, what did you do this Sunday? Or, or there'll just be these opportunities to be able to share the gospel. Now, there are times when we will take a, a step or two back. We do that, right, in our walks with God. But you've got to look at the, the hundred steps that have been taken forward in our journey with Christ. So then Jesus calls us to be light. And this is where we're going to have a little bit of fun. I want to direct your attention to the slides behind me, and I want you to see the wonderful things the Lord has done in the 12 months that I've been here. Now, this is my thank you card to you all. This is my last Sunday in the pulpit, and I wanted to have some fun with some of the pictures that I've, that I've had taken or pictures that I can find on the internet. And, and one of those things, because it's not about me, this is not my ministry. This is God's ministry, and he's placed a responsibility on each of us. 
So we're talking about the care that we provided people during the heavier times of COVID-19. I, I pray that those times are behind us, don't we all? We have award-winning team members. We have, you have me and Jason, you know, out in the unit, out in the 728, that's actually 728 maintenance, just delivering care and trying to take care of people. On the next slide, we have our fellowship luncheons. How much fun was that? Being in fellowship with one another. Thriving worship services. Men's group, women's group, advisory councils. All that took place within the, in the last 12 years. Uh, 12 months, I'm sorry, in the last year. <laughs> That'd be quite amazing, right? Then if you go to the next slide, I cannot forget the amazing volunteers at the Titans Refuge Ministry Center. Some folks in here volunteer there or use the place. What a beacon of hope. It's, it's a place to reach out to people, for people to come in and, and see that oh, the people of God are oh, you're really not so weird. You're, you're normal people, right? And, and I want to share with you a couple of really awesome metrics. There are like 60 volunteers that run that. It doesn't run on its own. I don't run it. The people do. And last year, we welcomed over 21,000 people in the refuge. And we're not talking about just American forces. We're talking about Turkish Air Force, TRAF. We're talking about Spanish Patriot Battery. All kinds of people visit the place. Now here, here's what we've done as a church body. When I arrived here, we had about eight to 10 in attendance when it was a traditional service. Now look at us. Look at how much it's grown. It's grown because of invitations, journeying with people, meeting people. Hey, you gotta, I want you to come hear the good news. I hope you didn't ask them to come and, and hear me because it's not about me, but <laughs> I'm boring. But it's come being a part of this community of people. One of the survey feedbacks we received is that people feel like it's a family of God and that's, that's what we try to do. We try to be in a fellowship and a faithful family. And we did that together. So next Sunday, so today's the last day of the traditional gospel service, kind of an end of an era. Next Sunday will be the gospel service. It's going to be at 1300. So this is where we're going to have some fun. I just want to pause there, and I want to thank some people. First, I want to ask uh, Patrice, would you come on up? Now, her and I, we head out on the same flight on the 5th of August, but um, because this is the last day of traditional gospel service, I want to say a special goodbye to you. And so we're going to thank some people um, who really helped us get this service launched. When I was charged with doing a traditional gospel service, I looked in the mirror and I'm like, gospel service? You know? And I was like, well, how is this going to happen? And so we had some people come together to help me uh, because I needed a lot of help to get this service launched to, to the way it is today. And so Patrice, of course... We want to present you with one of our coins on behalf of the chapel team. Here you go. <laughs> right. It's like, what do I do? All right. And one of our, this is what we're going to be giving away to uh, a few people I'm going to ask to call up, but, but because this is a, a goodbye for you, we've done this before for people we're saying goodbye to, one of our ornaments. So I know it's a lot of fun on Christmas time, and you hang up your ornaments, and you're like, you know, I remember that place, and you, you might have an opportunity to pray for the people and pray for the chaplains, chapel team, and all the people that are here at Insterlich. So from, from us, traditional gospel service, to you, Patrice, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. So I want to ask Angela Moorhead, Erica, Kat, Dennis, Brian, Chief, Chief DuBose, uh, Dante, I don't know if Dante is here, we'll get him later, uh, Bernice, Adela, there you are, and Jonathan. If anybody has a camera, would you be so kind as to take a picture? Patrice, come on up. So you're part of this group too. You're sitting back down. Come on. 
Um, I, want, I want to recognize this group of people. Okay, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to, all right. I want to recognize this group of people for helping us get this service launched because it would not be where it is unless it was for all of you. And I want to thank you for your time. I'm having an out-of-body experience. Here we go. All right, I want to thank all of you for, for helping us get this service started. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, from all of us to you. For when I give you a gift, Ozzy, Denise, I wish I could give you a gift, but I legally can't. But thank you from the <laughs> bottom of my heart. I would get in trouble, and I, I want to promote, so... guys. Thank you. And this one's for Dante. Did we get a, pi we get a picture? All right, let's do it. Oh, mask. Ozzy, Denise, you can legally be in this photo. <laughs> I, I, I checked with Cody, it's okay. Um, maybe, okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. Smile. Thank you all. Thanks for the photo. I made it through that. And so 1 Peter 4.10, what's on the ornament, it says this. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. And so many of you are continuing to step up and volunteer and get involved. So thank you to some of the newcomers. I, I pray that the gospel service blows this place out. I, I pray that we exceed 100. So Jesus calls us to be a light of the world, a city set up on a hill. And so we can't think to look over our shoulder and say, and maybe, maybe Mrs. Bad Attitude will do it, or Mr. Indifferent will do it. No, God has called us. He's given us all a very unique and special mission, big or small. We all have a mission. And you're going to get to that point. Just be patient. But somebody's going to ask you, why are you the way you are? You know, why are you so full of joy? And you get to respond in kind. Jesus tells us that we cannot take the light and hide it underneath a basket. We're to shine our light. And, and, and we tell people, hey, I'm proud of belonging to the King of kings and Lord of lords. When we do our work as unto the Lord, when we have integrity, one of our spiritual core values, we do as Jesus tells us to do, People are going to start to see our good works. In fact, commanders may even like encourage their people to go to chapel. Like, you got to be a part of the part of the chapel because the behavior is wonderful. I love this. But we don't do our good works to show off. We don't do our good works to gain approval from the Lord. He's already done the work. He already approves. He already loves us where we're at. But we do it because we get to. We're in relationship with the Lord, and we do it because we love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And how we respond may eternally matter to somebody. You might have this small time frame where that person is searching and seeking, but they're looking at your behavior and they're saying, hmm, what difference does the gospel make in our lives? It could be an eternal matter. So let me encourage you, in this next part of Matthew, in Matthew chapter 10, let's go there together. Five chapters later, Matthew chapter 10, 
I also have it up here on the screen. In t verse 26, so have no fear of them. Have no fear of them. For nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Verse 32. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. My hope and prayer for you is that as a chapel community, we will continue. Again, it's a relay, right? So we're carrying the torch for a while, and, and it's been carried since we had, I was in that chapel on the left, not in that picture, but we had what's known as Tent City. And in Tent City, we had a couple of deployed chaplains. And I remember that tent right there, that's, that's what chapel looked like. And then at some point in time, I guess, we were under construction and renovating. And it'll continue to go on and on, but it's our turn. So what are we going to do as a thriving community of Christ to continue this great work? God calls us to be light, shining into the darkness of people's lives, cities set up on a hill for all of Insterlick to see reflecting the light that God has placed on us and we carry that flame of this mission that God has called us to ever since our Lord proclaimed, let there be light. Well, as we transition into the Lord's Supper, as our ushers prepare to come forward to bring forth our communion, a couple of housekeeping things before we go into our time of reflection and meditation. Uh, there's a clear liquid in the middle, and that's wine. <laughs> On the outside, there's grape juice. I just don't want you to be surprised. But let us take this time to reflect and meditate on God's grace upon us. You know, what ways, what, what ways in our work centers, in our families, are we being a light, being salt? to the people around us? Is our, is our behavior reflective of a Christian? Are we congruent? Are we consistent from here on out through the week? Are we consistent in our behavior? And it's okay. If stuff needs to change, stuff needs to change. It happens to me all the time. It happens to us all the time. Things will have to change at some point in time. But are we living a life that is holy and pleasing to God? And how is that reflected in our behavior? God has called us to be salt and light. Please.
While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. He continues on to say, <clears throat> This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Found in your bulletins, you'll see the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Let's stand together one more time as we sing together hymn number 437 found in the celebrational hymnal. A song called Send the Light. Is it morning or afternoon? Good afternoon. Okay. Chaplain Paul Amaleri, I'm the deputy wing chaplain here, and I happen to be so blessed this past year. And one of the blessings I had was to get the opportunity to supervise your pastor, Chaplain McClellan. Today is his last weekend to preach, but he's going to be here. Next weekend, maybe hanging out in the pews or something, you know, just having fun because Chaplain Kroniki will be preaching uh, at the services next weekend. I just wanted to take an opportunity to thank him publicly. As a chapel, we get an opportunity to have his going away on the 4th of August before he zooms out, you know, the day before, whenever that is. So, but I just wanted to thank Chaplain Mack for the wonderful work he has done here. So... Sam, as they call you, you didn't get an opportunity to go home. I know how much she wanted to go home to visit family, Claire and Joshua. 
They've been in California all year. Didn't see them. COVID just did not allow him to leave a day after Easter as you had planned. We had everything planned. Everything fell apart. But he graciously took everything and pressed on. So in your 26 years of service, you've done a wonderful job. I've known you the past one year. Um, your, the gifts you bring to the table, your knowledge from being prior enlisted and now an officer, it, it has really helped our chapel. Personally, I speak for myself. Each time I called him for something, hey, let's get this done or this and that, graciously, got it, got it. And when he says, got it, I trust it and he will get it done. You run the refuge in a very extraordinary way. Thank you for doing that. And thank you for your patience with everything, you know, this past year and COVID just throwing your plans apart. But the one thing that got me, he's not here. He's, he's kind of um, out of our books now, Chaplain Guerrero. They were roommates when I got here. I got here like a week or two before them and they put two chaplains in one house. I'm like, wow, how does that happen? But they, I supervised both of them, and I, I would say like, it's like buy one, get one free, you know? <laughs> Their relationship was so wonderful. They worked well together. It made my job easier. So um, we get a chance more to thank you as a chapel, but on behalf of our boss, Wing Chaplain, I know you've coined a lot of people, but um, this is something special that you can keep and continue to know and be proud of the work that you did here this past year. Thank you personally, and thank you for everything. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, I've got some exciting things coming up. First, I know that we all ate really well last Sunday. What a wonderful time of fellowship, being able to hang out and eat together. So uh, grateful again for the shirt and for others chipped in to help uh, with our meal, uh, the chicken sandwiches. Now, if you, if you haven't had enough chicken, we're going to have more chicken tonight. So if you want to come out, and we know the Bible is no trivial pursuit. Got to have a pun in there. Bible is no trivial pursuit. We're going to have Bible trivia. And so you can either join a team, bring a team, and, uh, and prove your knowledge of the Bible. If anything, just come out and have fun, have some food. We're going to have masters of chicken. We're going to have lots and lots of chicken, bread, and fries, and lots of sodium. So we're going to have lots of lots of good stuff. So come on out, 1900 at the Refuge. And uh, again, come on out and join us, have some fun. And then, what a way to end the month, to end the week. We're going to celebrate with Chaplain Claude Nicky as he promotes to Lieutenant Colonel. Again, more food, and, and rumor has it that the cake is not going to be any ordinary cake. This is going to be one of those pack beer and cakes. So I might have had something to do with it. But we're going to celebrate with him at 1630 at the refuge as we uh, celebrate with him as he promotes to Lieutenant Colonel. So we don't have our, our families here with us, but we are a family of God. We're an Air Force family, and so I would encourage you to come on out and celebrate with us at the refuge on Friday. Chicken. Ch more chicken. I'm going to grow feathers and a beak. All right, and then next Sunday is, a, is again, a new era. We're going to be uh, modifying our two, uh, well, four services, but the ones I want to draw particular attention to in the Protestant community are the 1300 gospel service. So we have the gospel service 1300 right here. And then at 1700, not 1730, but 1700 at the refuge, we'll have our contemporary service. And then the LDS service will be here at nine for your folks that are LDS. And then for your uh, folks that are Catholic, we're going to have mass in here at the same time we normally did with traditional gospel. So some things are being moved around. Uh, take a picture of it. You may have people asking about it, so you'll have a picture of it in your phone to be able to send off to them. And that's not all. We have some very exciting things happening here with our discipleship opportunities. We have two new small groups. So y'all remember we had a young adult Bible study 
Well, we're going to be starting that back up again, uh, thanks to Austin and Kat. So if you have young adults like E1 through E4, even if you have E5, they're, they're not going to be turned away. Uh, they can provide some mentorship. But we've got a, a couple pieces of, a couple uh, curriculums on order for you all. And uh, that is over at the, at the Refuge on Wednesdays, 1830. So if you want to know more about that, get in contact with them too. And then Theology and Breakfast, Cody's going to be leading that at 830. First and third Saturday at the bowling alley. So our point of contact for that is Cody Vaughn. And uh, you're not really going to have an agenda, are you? It's just going to be kind of whatever's... Cool. Sounds awesome. Well, thanks to, to all three of you for stepping up. Jen, thanks for carrying on with the uh, Women's Bible Study and the uh, Officer Fellowship. So we have all kinds of opportunities to be able to get closer as a family of God. All right, so benediction is going to come from Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 through 26. And I'm going to pray over us as Moses prayed over the Israelites. He prayed this. The Lord bless you keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. Have a great week.